course, the uh, football training is much different from what it is now. And uh, it was Tuesday, Thursday night, and occasionally Sunday morning for a bit of fun. But, uh, <laughs> but it seemed to me, at least, that when I was playing, that there were some wonderful players who weren't really as fit as they could be, and that we could make everybody fitter. And then, provided we applied that fitness, provided we applied it, over the 18 players, it ought to tell, it ought to make a difference. And so we tried to lift the standard of fitness of uh, the whole team. And that combined then with the play on at all cost attitude, so that the ball was moving all the time. And I even said to the players, even pick the ball up to your opponent, give it to him as a free kick, so that he's got to keep moving and the game doesn't stop. Because we reasoned that if we kept going, at the end of the, towards the end, the fitness, which was maybe then a bit superior, would tell on the opposition. Mind you, they didn't do that too often. <laughs> That's, uh, so we trained very hard. For that time, it was hard training. And uh, it was intensive training uh, in that uh, on the uh, Tuesday night, the, some players used to say, well, it was harder than Saturday. And I didn't mind that because I thought, good, that's a good thing. If you don't take the risks as a coach, you must run the risks with injury. If you don't take the risks, well then your players won't take them on Saturday. It doesn't go down too well now when the players worth a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year. It's uh, with the board, they, they want to see that they want the little darlings kept. <laughs> <laughs> so that they get out there as matters. <laughs> Premiership, 
supports and leads the Preston that we played. It all had all the sideburns and the tattoos. Some of our players were always a bit nervous about Preston, but they were like a bunch of girls, I thought. <laughs> We were lucky we played the game at Victoria Park, which had been the home ground of the Carey First 18, because this place hadn't been built. So we had a bit of an exam, a bit of an advantage there. Then uh, we went on through into 1962. Gordy's coaching was fantastic. We finished up runner up in 62. I was playing the last game of the year, we played out here on a small ground. We didn't like playing the big ground, being on off the road, a bit big for us. Anyway, we played against the odds, and Chris Mitchell, who later went on and played with Geelong, and then finished up with Carlton. I said to Lofty, I said, I'm coming from behind Batty, who you come out of the top. On the little ground, the number two eight, and we played them up and we beat them. We get to the grand final with the odds, and we're playing down at the Harry Trock, Huge ground. Mitchell kicked seven goals, we didn't get there any more than they were the play. In 63 or 64 we, we got into B grade and really it was the coaching of Noel, of Noel Boyd that certainly got this club going. It was an old boys fun club up to win. So I just want to mention the three highlights. Uh, probably the greatest performance I've ever seen anybody in Amateur. Club. Happened in 1962. And he came, he turned up at the club. We've all forgotten because he died at the age of 30. And he makes Jimmy Buckley, he was my most difficult character at Carlton, quite an absolute general. His behaviour was a poor, but he could play for it. His name was Quentin Wink. One day we were down playing at Victoria Road. He took 30 marks in one game of football. He was phenomenal. He could have played league football. But he used to drink before the game and after the game. <laughs> <laughs> 62, we, we moved down to Victoria Road behind Teddy Ripper's pub. I got out there for the first game, I was resting in the forward pocket. There's 300 people behind the goals watching the game, and all the families are out on the wing. So, what's going on here? Five minutes later, they've all disappeared. Ten minutes later, they all come back. The SP was working really well. <laughs> Uh, I can remember, I can't remember what the game was, but Voidy came up to me at half time and he said that that centre half forward who we were playing is absolutely killing us. See if you can go out and give him one. <laughs> Which to me was a very hard bump. <laughs> so see if you can clean him up. So I went out to the next quarter, I ran around that ground all the way, I couldn't get near him, didn't get a kick. At three quarter time, I went back to the audience. I said, I've had enough of this. I think we can still win this game. I'm going to go and do it always to try and ball. And he's right out. So this bloke was still playing. Three minutes into the last quarter, this bloke comes out of the pack with the ball there. I cleaned him right up with what they were they looking for. <laughs> so my view is always you've got to play the ball. <laughs> you have to protect some of the, some of the weakness as well, like Johnny Dunshane. Curly Newnham at school, he turned out to be a great player. The other highlight I just want to mention is that the, the parties we used to hold on Saturday night down at the reception area uh, near the Kew Town Hall. A wonderful place, all the parents would come, all the players would go. Everyone would have a good time, have a few beers. At 11 o'clock, all the parents would go home. And then the party would start. And uh, <coughs> Graham Wilmot would get on the piano. He knew a whole 40 verses of Eskimo Nell. <laughs> <laughs> and the party would begin. We'd be there at 2 or 3 in the morning. It was absolutely fantastic. So we enjoyed our football because we were successful. And old boy was right. We built great camaraderie. And because We've all turned up here today, except Jimmy Grant's up in Queensland. It's great to see Johnny Sedman here, he's come all the way from Queensland. I was invited to avoid him, told me I should go down and run forth. Oh, I mean, that's so bloody stupid. You've got to, you're back from Carlton, you've got to be very good. So I didn't know, I was then invited to play for the Blues and Blacks. He said, don't go there, he's not an old carry. We had a lot of fun. We had much more fun there, and I just want to say, John Kennedy doesn't quite understand how instrumental he was in our great success. Because had he not trained Noel Boyd, 
to follow in the way you train people who have never have done it. Noel Boyd, I think, is really the person who got this club up and going. Fantastic teacher and a great man. Well done. Well, I've got John Dunshe with me, a champion player at Old Kerry. And uh, he went on and played 37 games for Hawthorne. He, uh, he played with us in 1961 in our premiership year. But John, you were just saying that the, they, they voted you out so the school boys couldn't play. You were still yeah, at school. The, at, the, at the time, the, uh, the uh, team decided to have a vote as to whether school boys could play because we'd only paid, played during school holidays, not at any other time during the year. And, this, and the club decided that uh, it would be uh, wrong to push somebody out of the side who played all year for... Geez, I, I wouldn't have voted for that. <laughs> now, now so did you come down to the club in 62? I came down to the club in 63. 63? Yeah, and I yeah. played in 63 and won the, the club's best That's and fairest. fairest in 63 and then went to Hawthorne in 64. Yeah, disgraceful <laughs> leaving off. <laughs> that was a terrible decision. He was a very, very good footballer. His father was chairman of the school council. The Dunche is a very famous at Kerry, and he's a great contributor, and it's great to see him here today. Thanks, Thanks Johnny. Thank good you idea. very much. Now, Brucey Linthorne's on my right, a great halfback flanker in the 61 Premiership team. I don't think he goes too well today, Brucey. No, mate, I'll back, back pocket these days. <laughs> back pocket, eh? <laughs> What do you remember about the great years of 60? Which years did you play? 60, uh, 60 uh, 58, uh, 59 rather than 63. Yeah. Great years, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, they were great years. Uh, what I remember about Kitty Rip was all the hotel yeah. after the game was a, yeah. was a, was very good. Uh, the Chevron Hotel occasionally we played it on the park. So it was always the pub that really uh, prompted well, that was, your memory more than right. the game. The people that went there. Right. And now I've got Frankie Jones who played full forward in the 61 Premiership team. I used to change in the forward pocket playing on the ball. And Frankie would say, get out of my way, get out of my way, get out of my way. Well, I wasn't letting goal kicker that because you're anyway. You're quite the full forward. Letting goal kicker of a hoop. In that section. That the whole egra. Yes. Well, yeah. Could have been more of you had played taken half the half Well, Ronnie got, Steen and I Ronnie had to make Steen. sure he kicked the goal so we go over the top of you. That's right. It'd be hammered by these two players coming over the top. Anyway, it was a great year. Yeah, and, and don't forget the What's your great right? memory? Yeah. That's right. Well, the great. We had, the, we had the grand final celebration at Frank's house. At the parents' house. The parents' house in Baker Avenue where I lived as well. And I can still remember my fond memory was there was Bunny Gramic, Gramic Senior. He was hanging on to the tent post in the middle of the... I wasn't sure whether he was holding up the tent or the tent was holding him up. But I think the tent was holding him up. Did you agree? That was a great one. It was a great one. Yeah, I think Bunny said it was the uh, best, best day of his life. Carried one of It was good. But as, I, as was said by um, uh, you today and, and Noel, we were fit. I've never been fitter in my life. I never will be again, unfortunately. <laughs> um, we used to run and run and run. Uh, we didn't have great talent, but we were fit.